Hey everyone, this is Matt Perez, and welcome to video 9 in our Scanda 3D part design series. Now, in the last one, we started creating some solid geometry. We used the features, the front face of our camera model, and we started and we created an extrude. Now, this is a very basic start, a very rough start, and it gives us a good idea of what direction to go. So, we have this model here. I'm going to go ahead and hide it, and what we want to do is take a look at another option. So, we can create the basic geometry like that, but it's going to be hard to physically locate this inside this pocket. So another option is to create some geometry that will actually fill in this entire pocket. That way we know everything is located properly. So what I want to do is take some of these standard planes. So if we look at the front plane for this camera, we want to start a new sketch on this plane. And the reason I want to do this is because I'm going to draw a spline and I'm going to make it a three point spline. And then what I want to do is take the endpoints of the spline and I'm going to pierce these uh, these inner curves here. I want to make sure that it's accurately located where it hits that geometry. And then what I can do with this third point is help move things around and get a rough shape, a rough idea. You could also do it without this third point. We could delete that and we could simply use the spline handles to get the geometry we want as well. So there are several different ways that we can do this. Now it's important to rotate this thing around and figure out where your curve is in relation to the camera model as well. So now that we have this curve here, what we can do is we can create a filled surface. So we can do a filled surface using a couple of these edges, a couple of these boundaries, and then we can create a complete filled surface of this area. Now one option that you'll have to do because we don't have a closed profile is use fix up boundary. And the reason I use fix up boundary as opposed to grabbing this curve is because now I want to use it as a constraint curve. I want to come back, I want to grab that and allow that to drive the shape of the rest of this model. So once we do that, we hit OK and now we've created a model that fits perfectly into that pocket. And you can see we still have part of the camera exposed and that's okay because we're going to go back and we're going to do some modifications here. I'm going to hide this surface and then I'm going to use my offset surfaces with a zero offset and I'm going to grab these three inner surfaces here. Now I can hide the overall surface and turn on my surface fill and then I can create a patch or a surface fill at this back edge. So I'm going to go ahead and grab these four edges and create a fill in this area. You could also do some other things. We could trim this surface so that way we didn't have the funky geometry on the backhand side. And that's probably a better option, but I'm going to go ahead and run with this for now. Now I can knit all these surfaces together and because we have a closed volume, I can use try to form a solid. Now one thing you'll notice is that we actually have an area up front where it's coming to a pretty thin section, a pretty point. Now this can produce some issues, especially depending on your tolerances or what operation you're using to actually print this thing. So in reality, we're going to end up cutting some of this off or adding some more geometry down here. Now there are a few ways around this. If we step back a little bit, we remove that surface fill and we take a look at this surface fill that we created. I'm just going to go ahead and delete my offset and delete my surface fill and turn my regular surface back on. One thing I can do is come in and create a 3D sketch. Now with this 3D sketch I can use a spline and I can attach to that point and I can attach to my curve here. Now this allows me to do something interesting here. I can modify the direction that we're actually going to create this fill. So if I want to add some more geometry, for instance right here, I can go ahead and do that. So now when I come back and go to my surfaces and create a fill in this area, I'm going to go ahead and grab all the edges I need. And then under constraint curves, I can grab this curve again and then I can grab that 3D sketch that we created. So you'll notice that once I grab that 3D sketch, things, things get a little crazy, but let's go ahead and okay this and take a look at what it creates. So it adds a little bit more geometry in this area, and then it actually is covering up most of the camera, but in terms of aesthetics, this doesn't look real great. Now again, you have to go back and decide, well, do we want an aesthetic model or do we want a functional model or do we need both? So hop back in here 
remove our 3D sketch from the constraint curves. Now, obviously that looks a whole lot better, allowing SolidWorks to do all of the meshing and smooth things out. So what are our other options? What else can we do here? All right, well, let's delete the surface fill. And again, as I mentioned, you want to go down many different avenues. You want to make sure that you explore all your options. We can use a ruled surface option. Now with ruled surface, we can produce a sweep going towards a plane. Now in my case, we want to go towards the top plane and we want to select all these edges. So I'm going to grab all these edges that we want to actually go towards. And now I can create a sweep section of this. Now this way I'm able to add thickness all the way at the end. And then what I can do is again, go to my front plane, draw sketch. And this time with my spline, I'm going to actually have it pierce this upper edge of that surface, that ruled surface we just created. So now if we look at this again from our, our normal two view, we really don't need to do much. We don't need to add much geometry because we're already going over this area, already going over this pocket. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave that as a straight line for now. And then I'm going to go back and do a filled surface and allow it to fill all of these edges. And then I can grab the constraint curve if I want to drive the shape a little bit more. So one thing you'll notice now is that the surface is again, it's covering some of this information. You'll notice at the back, it kind of blows up and, and goes out the back end a little bit, but it's covering more of that information. And now we don't have that thin section at the end. So again, a lot of back and forth. We really need to take a look at how we want to produce the curvature. So let's take another good look at the spline that we created. We can actually add some, a little bit of concavity to this part because we have enough material around the camera so we can add some concavity there and then after the fact we can blend these edges in. Another thing that we can do is add a 3D sketch. We can add a spline going from this point to this point. So once we've fixed both of those locations, it makes it a little bit easier to control the geometry. So now again, we can add some concavity on the back end and then now we can do our filled surface using all of these edges. And now that we've filled in the back side, everything's going to be a little bit cleaner. And again, we can come in with our constraint curve and we can use that if we need. So you can see now we've made more of a pocket and that allows us to have a complete opening of the lens. Now we might have some issues with visibility and viewing angle here, but it's allowed us to open up some of that geometry. So now we can hide our surface, go back and again do an offset surface zero and grab these three inner surfaces. And then we can take a look at filling in this back section and knitting these together. So again, we'll do a filled surface on this back half grab all of the edges that we need to fill in this area, and then we can knit them all together. And again, because it is a closed area, it's essentially a watertight set of surfaces. We can try to form a solid. And now we've got solid geometry here. So this is gonna be great for us because now we have all of our standard planes associated with the camera. And we have this nice solid chunk that really is only going to fit one way in that pocket because it accurately mimics the rest of that geometry. So I think that'll do it for this video. In the next one, we'll take care of a little bit more information about how we're going to hold the camera in here and removing some material so that we can actually insert the camera and have a cable passage out the back and all that extra information. But as always, if you guys have any questions, please email solidworksupport at mlc-cad.com and we'll see you next time.